for my last video on multiplying polynomials, this one is any type of polynomial times any other type of polynomial. So I'm going to use this method that works for any type, so you can use this if you like. Uh, it's very similar to what I showed you before. So let me take a look at this type of polynomial. I have a binomial times a binomial. I know it's a binomial because there's two terms, 1 and 2 times 1 and 2. So my method I like to use, I used in the previous video, was to make an area multiplication box. So what I do is I make a little box, and this one's going to be a 2 by 2 this time. The reason it's 2 by 2 is because I have two terms times two terms. It doesn't matter where I put them, but let's say I put this one here. This is going to be x and a negative 2. Over here, this is going to be x and a positive 3. All right, and then all I have to do is fill in that box with the correct multiplication. So 1x times 1x is x squared. x times a negative 2, negative 2x. x times a positive 3, positive 3x. 3 times a negative 2, negative 6. What's really great about this particular uh, way of doing things is you're going to notice that many times these diagonals here are going to be like terms. So that's great. Those are the ones that I can combine. So I start with the largest exponent. That's this guy here. So x squared. Next, 3x negative 2x gives me positive 1x. And last but not least, I'm left with my constant negative 6. So there's my answer there. Let me show you. I wouldn't be a proper math teacher if I didn't teach you the FOIL method, although I don't like using the FOIL method. Shh, go figure. Here you go. Method 2, FOIL. Some of your... Uh, siblings or your family might say, oh, I learned FOIL. Well, you can tell them you know it too, you just don't like to use it. It stands for first, outer, inner, last. What do I mean by that? First, that means first two terms get multiplied first. So x times x, x squared. Next, the outer. That means this outer and that outer. So 3 times x or x times 3 is 3x. Then the inner. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Then the last, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Then you can see that x squared is by itself. These two are like terms. Combine them, you get your positive x, and then your negative 6. And voila, you came up with the same exact answer as I did um, in the previous example. The reason I don't like FOIL is because it only works with a binomial times a binomial. And it won't work for anything else. Forget it. I'm not going to memorize that. We're going to use area multiplication. So here we go. Let's take a look at another example. A binomial times a binomial. Hmm. How big of an area should I make of my box? Well, I've got two terms, so I better have one, two, and two terms the other way. One, two. So I'll go ahead and make my little square here. And then I can put those two terms anywhere I like. So if I want to go ahead and put this one on the side this time, that's fine. The reason we can do that is because we're just multiplying in different orders. That's the commutative property of multiplication. It doesn't matter the way you order. You multiply. All right, so now I'm going to go and fill in the boxes here. So one at a time, I'll start with the top. 5 times 2 is 10, x squared. 5 times negative 5, negative 25x. 2x times negative 8, negative 16x. And last but not least, I have 40. So lovely, wonderful. I see that my diagonals, once again, are like terms scored. All right, so we're going to start off with 10x squared. These two are both negatives, so we're going to add these together. So I add it up. Let's see, 25, 35. That's going to be negative, let's see, 25, 35, 41. Negative 41x. Lastly, I got my 40 right there. So there's my answer, 10x squared minus 41x uh, plus 40. Okay, excellent. I'm going to move on. One more example. Feel free to pause the video at any time. You think, oh, I can do this, Mr. Ramos. Well, go for it. Do it. Show me. All right, so here I got a trinomial times a binomial. Hmm, one, two, three, one, two. I better make that size of a rectangle. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make that right now. Let's see, three. Let's go white this way. One, two, three by two. One, two. All right, so there's my rectangle. Two terms this way, three terms this way. All right, let's see if this works out. 6z squared, positive z minus 1, or negative 1. On the side over here, 9z, negative 5. I'm going to go by really fast, so get ready for this. Here we go. All right, I get 54z to the third, positive 9z squared, negative 9z, 
negative 30z squared, negative 5z, and 5. Wow, did you catch that? Rewind it, watch it again. Here we go, here are my like terms. Oh my goodness, they are diagonals. That one is a like term. Let me find another highlighter. Bam! These two are diagonals and they're like terms as well. Amazing. All right, so here we go. Here's my answer. I start with the largest exponent, 54z to the third. That's the largest exponent. Next, these two combine together to give me negative 21z squared. Next, these two combine to give me negative 14z. And last but not least, 5. Oh my goodness, I'm so smart. You're so smart. We're so smart together. All right, that was it.